This is a quick tutorial for how to use the Pi Light Duster Pro when running the version that's been customized for the Pi 4. The Pi 4 allows you to display 4K video signals, but it also uses a completely different set of drivers underneath the hood. And because of this, just a few of the commands that the Light Duster uses have changed. So that's why we need a different quick start for Pi 4 users. Now when you turn on the lag tester, you get a brief summary of the different commands. So that can be helpful, but let's actually show them in action. So to start the lag tester, you type LT and hit enter. And then you get this screen here. I've put my sensor in the upper left hand corner. And so we're printing out the input lag for the upper left hand corner. We also measure the response time. Those two numbers are printed in the upper right hand corner, input lag in red, response time in yellow. If we wanted to take a recording of the current values, you hit spacebar and it just starts recording trials. With a TV like this particular one, it's very consistent, at least uh, at non 4K modes, as you'll see later, 4K is a little different. So you don't need a whole lot of trials. But here I've recorded 13. Push escape when you're done. And it prints a summary of your recordings you've taken. And then, of course, the average. But let's try changing the mode from 720p to 4K. In order to do that, we type TV. And then for Unix heads, you can do auto completion uh, by pushing the tab button twice. So it lists the possible versions of the TV command that you could run. Uh, and here, so here's a list of possible commands. The one we're interested in is TV4K. So you type those four letters, TV4K, and hit enter. Nothing changes immediately, but it's saved that that's the mode we want to test next. Then in order to test that mode, we type LT. And here we are testing uh, input lag in 4K. Now this particular TV actually takes a while to settle on its input lag value when you're in 4K mode. This isn't an artifact of the lag tester. This is just how this TV works. It takes a while to fully synchronize with v v refresh, But you can see that it does. And once it synchronizes, the values are very consistent. And so again, we could push spacebar and record if we wanted to. But since we've already demonstrated that, let's not bother with that. Back at this screen, we could choose a different video mode. Uh, interestingly, there's two sort of versions of 4K. There's 4K where the resolution is 496, and there's 4K where the resolution is about 3800. There's no consistent naming for these, so I've used the term TV38K, which is honestly not the best name for it, but there it is, and that's the resolution you would get if you ran it. And go ahead and do that here. And again, you have to wait a little bit for it to settle. It's a little faster this time, it seems. Oh, no, it's still taking a little bit of time. It's not unusual for TVs to take a little bit of time for their input lag to settle down on a consistent value. This TV command that I've written just supports a few standard modes like 1080p, 480i, et cetera, et cetera but your TV may come with more modes than that. To find out what modes it supports, type list modes and you'll get a list. So here's all the modes that this particular TV reports and we can choose one of them by typing TV and then if we want progressive, we type P. If we want interlace, we type I. So TV, P, and then you type the resolution that you want. So let's try something weird here like 1152 by 864 at 75 hertz. Now that's a pretty unusual resolution to export, and that's why I haven't provided pre-written scripts to handle that as a, I guess you'd call that 864p. I don't know, it's not, not very standardized. In any case, type those, type LT, and it will pull that up. Now it's interesting that the TV reports that it supports this mode, it doesn't really. So it, it will display it, but it's not actually drawing at 75 hertz. And so you'll see here that the input lag never settles on a specific value. In fact, it slowly drifts. And that's because although it's 
getting 75 frames a second, it's only drawing 60 of those. And so it drops 15 frames a second. And that means that the amount of input lag is sometimes quite a bit longer than other times because basically throwing away a whole frame of video input. So that can be a pretty useful thing to use a lag gesture for is to see if the modes that the TV purports to support are actually doing you any good over the standard 1080p at 60 hertz modes that all TVs definitely support. Now if we want to test an interlaced mode, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate that. So very similar syntax, TV I, and then we can type the resolution that we'd like to test. So let's do 1920, 1080 at, let's see here, does it, it offers uh, 50 hertz. So that's one that I don't have a proven script for. The normal 1080i script tries to set the refresh rate for 60 hertz, not 50. So here we go. Now we're going to get a interlaced mode. And there it is, 1080i at 50 hertz. Now this particular TV uses bobbed interlacing, so it gets a lot of flicker when it's in interlaced mode, but it's not actually any slower, which is kind of cool. I don't know if you can really see it, but in the lower right-hand corner, I've got a little test image that's always displayed that makes it easy to tell if you're getting some kind of bobbed interlacing because one of the rectangles flashes quite actively when bobbed interlacing is happening. So there you go. That's a very quick demo of how the Pi 4 specific version of Lag Tester works. I'm going to demonstrate just one other thing that's kind of cool. And this is unscripted, so I'll see how well it works with this particular TV. If you type TV CVT, you can go completely off-road and make up any old resolution and refresh rate you want. Now the off script part of this is I don't know how this TV is going to respond to this, but let's try 800 by 600 at 85 hertz, which is definitely not anywhere on that list of supported modes. Now, like I said, I don't know if the TV is going to like this or not. Let's see. And what do you know? It does like it. It uh, doesn't scale it quite right. And it seems to have some oddities. The sensor is no longer on top of the flashing bar, so we're not actually getting any input lag value. We'd have to move the sensor around. But um, if we did move it around, we could find out what it's doing with this video signal. And almost certainly it's dropping a lot of frames. It's not really drawing at this refresh rate. So this can be pretty handy to see if uh, your monitor supports secret modes that it doesn't officially report as having in the list. So that is one thing that's possible with the Pi 4 version that's not possible with the Pi 0 version. The Pi 0 version makes it much harder to make up custom modes. So now that is one nice thing about the Pi 4 is that custom modes are trivially easy to implement and it supports 4K resolution. So the Pi 4 version is in some sense more powerful, although uh, uh, <laughs> from the programming perspective, I sure enjoyed writing the Pi 0 version more. All right, well, I hope that was helpful for new users and uh, potential users. And uh, send me a message if you have any questions.